What's up, everybody? This is Sean. Welcome to Comics Review. This is where we talk about comic books, the hobby, and everything in between. It's been a crazy year uh, for everybody. You know, uh, started this podcast, doing all the podcasts with my son inside the Square to Wrestling podcast. A lot of interest, a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of stuff to cover, especially in this one. So, I'm gonna start off with some of my good reads of the year. Some of my better reads of the year have been Batman, Detective Comics, surprisingly enough, Action Comics, um, Do a Power Bomb, The Approach, which is kind of new ish, but it's a very good mini series. It's a short series right now. I think issue three just came out yesterday. I'm sorry, Wednesday. Uh, Something is Killing the Children. The main title is the, is really good, really well done right now. Uh, House of Slaughter, <sighs> hit or miss. Uh, the first arc was pretty good. The second arc I did not like very very well. It was missing something. Um, it just I don't know. I the art and writing is, is there. Just I don't know. I just I, I can't care about the characters in the second arc. I, I just I don't know. Um, Philadelphia has been really strong. Shout out to the OG Rodney Barnes, Anita Hall's Nightmare Nightmare Blog, which is uh, in the same universe as Philadelphia. Really well done series. They they kind of bounce off each other. They feature some of the same characters and a lot of the same mythos and premises. Uh, but it's really they're really good art from, from Jason Sean Alexander, who you might have heard of. <laughs> I mean, he's super famous. He used to draw Spawn and a bunch of other books. Um, well written, beautifully drawn, really good cover art too. Like really memorable cover art. If you uh, have a chance to pick them up and trade, and you don't want to buy the singles, you know, pick them up and trade. But I'm telling you, really good books. I've also been following really closely, believe it or not, Captain Marvel. Um, Carol Danvers' story is, you know, she intrigues me. She's always intrigued me as a character, even when she was Miss Marvel. Very well done character. She's a good history. You know, now they're exploring the binary character. But her series has been pretty pretty good. Uh, and I've followed it for the last couple of years now. Um, her and Spider-Woman, I like their, the way they played off each other. And Spider-Woman's uh, series that was canceled a year and some change ago. And it got me interested in Carol Danvers. So that's when I started buying her. Her, um, this this new iteration of the character. Uh, questionable reads, and please no one bite my head off, but the spider titles. How many damn spider titles are we going to have? You know, we have Spider-Man. We have um, the adjectiveless Spider-Man. We got Miles Morales Spider-Man. We got Edge of the Spider-Verse. We had this, uh, the Spider-Gwen story. Um, I'm sorry, with all the different Gwen variants. Um and now we got uh, the Lost Hunt Spider-Man. And then we got another one that's different than that. And, and it's just it get, it's getting very repetitive. And it makes you not want to funnel your money into, you know, because some people only read Spider-Man. They're, I'm, I'm one of the guys, those Marvel guys that, you know, I don't really read a lot of things outside of Spider-Man from Marvel. Because, I, you know, Peter Parker, I grew up watching him. Watching TV, the cartoons, reading the comic books, he's always been one of my favorite characters because he's easily he's easy to identify with. You know, he's a he's a poor kid. He lives paycheck to paycheck. He lives with his aunt May. Uh, he don't have his parents, and he just wants to, he just wants to do well for his 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 city, his block. Uh, I really like his character and you know his everything about him. He's just a very likable character. But when you start putting him in these cosmic situations. These multiversal situations, and it's fifty eleven different Spider Man. I mean, if you look at this new Spider title that Dan Slide is writing, it is a million Spider Man. Some of them you know, some of them you don't. Um, and you know, I I said all the Spider titles. I'm 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 certain I'm missing some. He has some one shots. He has Spider the Spider Punk series came out last summer. It's just you. It's so many. You become inundated, and you don't know exactly what the story is anymore. And now they have this dark web stuff with Ben Riley becoming Chasm, 
which is a little bit more confusing. Even though I like Chasm's uh, con- concept, his character, he's still a clone. It's like a continuation of the clone saga. He has a cool purple and black suit. He has a couple different more powers. Okay. How can we get out of this and do something different? And I think that's going to be the biggest uh, challenge for Spider-Man next year after they finish the dark web stuff. Um, some other things that are questionable. Um, the Batman inundation. DC has the same problem that Marvel does. Spider-Man is their most popular character in Marvel. Batman is arguably the most popular character in just about all the comics. He has several titles and title adjacents. You know, you got him, you got his detective, you got Batman, you got I Am Batman, which is ending, sadly, uh, this next issue. You have the Batgirls, you have Nightwing, you have Batman versus Robin, uh, the mini that just ended. Um, He's a prominent figure in a lot of the Justice stuff, the Dark Crisis stuff. And not to mention uh, the the series that just ended, you know, over the summer, like the Flashpoint Beyond. Not him, exactly, but his dad, the other Batman, from the Flashpoint, the Flashpoint Batman, uh, Thomas Wayne. And then you had all the miniseries that they had, Fortress, uh, Killing Time, uh, uh, the Gotham series, Year One. It's a million different Batman series. And it's hard to follow what's the continuity and what's not. You know, the main titles are all continuity. The Black Label stuff... Not so much, but they look like continuity, so it can get you confused. But it's it's hard. I really like what Zadarsky and Rom V are doing. They in the main title, Batman and Detective Comics, because they they just they have a different way of telling the story. And this last uh, storyline with Failsafe is really good. Um, I don't want to spoil anything for you. And if you haven't picked it up, pick it up. I think it it really sets Batman up for, you know, a good little run right now. But, you know, it's just very inundated. If you're not reading the main two two titles, I suggest dropping the rest of them. I like I Am Batman, and I'm going to follow until the bitter end. But, you know, besides Tech and Batman, I'm not reading nothing else. You know, I threw away, not threw away. I gave up a lot of money in that bi-monthly series they had. Um, One Dark Night. It was a it was a magazine prestige format by Jock. Really well done, but the story was very simplistic. You know, if you like a gritty Batman story that he's pushed to his limits, that's for you. You know, that's where you buy it. Uh, the cover price was ridiculous. I think it was what uh, six seven bucks a, a copy. And like I said, it's magazine format, so you can't really, you have to buy special bags for it, special bags and boards. <sighs> End of the year roundups. Um, this year, I bought about 800 comics. Um, about I bought about 20 graded books. I wanted to highlight graded, well, I'll share about three highlights uh, of the graded books I bought. Eternals, number one. As soon as the movie came out and it tanked and everyone started shedding off their copies, <laughs> the graded copies of Eternals, I, I jumped at it. it was, it's an 8.0 CGC. I bought it for like 45 bucks. Um, I also got Spider-Woman number one, and that's the Jessica Drew uh, series, um, and it's an 8.0. I got that. And another really uh, good series I always wanted to collect was the original Walking Dead. Not the Robert Kirkman Walking Dead. There was a series that Air Cell Comics produced in the 80s, the mid-80s, called The Walking Dead. And it was about zombies. Um, I wanted to get the issue number two. It had a really gory cover. It looked almost like an EC comic. Uh, it's, a, it's a 9 point, I think it's a 9.2 or 9.4. I had to check. And it's a CGC, but I got it for a song as well. Beautiful comic book. Beautiful. I also got a copy of Dead World number one. And it's a 9.0 CGC. Um, I like those old old 80s horror comics. I really do. 
they had something about them that was just different. Um, they they weren't approved by the Comic Code Authority, and they were very counterculture, very, extremely violent, very gory, different kind of storytelling. It's like the storytelling you're kind of getting now. Uh, no holes barred, end of the world, desperation, and they really convey the desperation and dystopia. And I think a lot of times uh, the newer readers, I shouldn't even say readers, mostly collectors, because a lot of people now don't read comic books. They just collect for the covers. A lot of people don't understand how groundbreaking those series were or even how how groundbreaking groundbreaking they are um, now. You know, as a a young man growing up reading stuff like that, it just it kind of shocks you. Like, man, the world is it can't be that crazy. And then you go out as a person, you know, me, a veteran going out, going to a war, going you know, certain country for 20 some years, and you say, yeah, the world is probably worse than what they got in the comic book. But it's it was really uh, fun to, and exciting for me to get those. I have them, I have a, I have them raw too. And I also got a copy, uh, ungraded copies of Jessica Drew, Spider Woman, number one. And I got another ungraded copy of Spectac- Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider Man, number one. Um, it was a comic I always wanted to own. Never had the money to get it, but it was an ungraded copy. Very nice, clean reader. Probably grade about six or seven, but I bought it, and I was, you know, the second time I'd only I'd ever read it, but it was exciting to get. But some of my top comics, uh, top series this year, I think I talked about a few of them already. Do a power bomb, Philadelphia, and Batman. Um, do a power bomb it was probably one of the best short series. Uh, I had, probably one of the better short series I read since Stray Dogs. Um, had some horror element to it, had some mysticism, and it had wrestling. And if you, and I don't want to give anything away, but the ending, it was just amazing. It it got it got you through those issues, and you and they're very quick reads. Very quick reads, but once you get through them, you want to read them again. And the last issue just, you know, it hits you. It hits you. Um, I don't know, it hit me because it was like an emotional response. It made me emote, and I was like, man, this is a good book. So I, I don't know if they're going to do something different with that title uh, or, you know, make a second volume. But, man, let me tell you, that that is a book to remember. I, I would I would buy that again if it came back out. And it makes me reconsider, you know, buying uh, series at uh, the center point is wrestling. I like wrestling. Don't get me wrong, but I don't know how it translate how well it translates to the comic medium. Now we do. We know how well it translates. It translates really well, especially if it's well done. And Image had a hit on their hands. Let me tell you. Three of my honorable mentions. Well, some of my honorable mentions. I shouldn't say three because I got four things. Little monsters. Uh, by Jeff Lemire, really good series, and in, <laughs> and lo and behold, it's a vampire series. But it's a different take on the on the vampire series. I don't want to give anything away, but it's really well done. Locus by Scout Comics. It's a horror series as well. Um, it's a little different than. Um, it's very moody. It's once say very moody. It's very very moody. And it's very somber from the beginning to the end. And this is the second volume, Ballad of Men, that I've collected. Um, The first series came out last year. And it was a four-issue series, just like this one was. But it it gave you a a beginning, a middle, and an end. So you had a complete story. So it kind of, it, 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 like I said, it made me emote, so I liked it a lot. And you got to care about the characters. (laughs) And for much as I dragged Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man, and Miles Morales, those are two pretty decent series. Uh, Miles just had a reboot. Uh, he has a new series uh, out right now. Uh, but his old series ended earlier this year. And it and it, it ended pretty well, too. Um, Miles went across the multiverse, fought an evil version of himself. You know, the very cosmic things 
And he also had a mini- miniseries, you know, What If Miles Morales? And he had become these different characters, which was not bad, but very predictable. But I like the direction his character is going. Um, the Amazing Spider-Man series is really well done right now. Well, I think it has people are knocking it because of the art with John Romita Jr., but he's not on it right now. The last couple of issues, I I think I've read, he's not been on it. But he's really, uh, I think once they tie up this dark web stuff and get back to his street level stuff, because the storyline he had before with Tombstone was really well done. You know, Tombstone got Peter involved in his war with the Rose. And I, you know, I want to tell you all the gist and the details of that, but it was really well done. And it kind of made you think like, damn, they putting, putting Peter through it, you know, but Peter's one of those characters that's very resilient. He always bounces back. And that's what I like about him. And hopefully once this dark web nonsense ends, he'll get back to fighting some street level stuff, which he's really well, he's really well suited to do. And another series I want to bring you guys attention is Flawed. Flawed by Chuck Brown is ridiculously good. A lot of action, really good uh, protagonist and antagonist, and has a moving storyline and has a lot of you know, big bang effect. A lot of stuff goes on at one time. And it has some likable uh, sub characters too. So if you, you might see it on, on the wall and you're confused about what it is, you should buy it, give it a shot. I did. And it was one of the better, you know, one of the groups I follow, Black Comic Lords. Um, shout out to Herschel and that, and that team. I love those guys because they put out a lot of good information about stuff that you wouldn't normally pick up. And that was one of the things I wouldn't normally pick up. But uh, when I picked it up, I was like, man, this is a good read. You know, I'll put this on my pull list. And, that, and that's what I did. Uh, issue four just came out Wednesday. Haven't, haven't had a chance to read it yet. Because guess what I got? I got COVID. So I've been quarantined. I've been quarantined for the last three days. So I don't have a chance to, you know, read my new pulls my wife picked up for me. But it's really well done. Um, another, good sto- another good story to read, um, if you can get them, is Noctera. It completed recently, and it came out with a couple of different, um, well, it came out with a one-shot. Really good series. Curious to see where it goes from here. Um, just one of those, you know, Scott Snyder produced books. Really fun read, a lot of action, good art, and it takes you somewhere. You don't have to sit and wait for things to happen. It all it will definitely happen. Some of my back issue rereads, <laughs> as I like to call them. Uh, St. Mercy. It's a horror western. It... Uh, Plays with some Mesoamerican uh, gods, pantheons, and culture, and it translates it into the Old West, which is really cool to see. You know, it, it, read, it reads like a Western, like a horror driven, driven Western, almost like a Jonah Hex uh, comic book. But the, the antagonists are just people for the most part. The protagonist, she's. Really scary toward <laughs> toward the air, but uh, you know I don't want to give it away. It's a four issue mini, really good. You can probably find it in your dollar bin somewhere. Uh, really good. It's from Image Comics, Image and Top Cow. West of Sundown is another series like that. I discovered uh, at my LCS, and I think uh, one of their um, one of their sidewalk sales. I got the first four issues, and I was really impressed by how well they were done. And I like vampires. I like vampires. I like westerns. I like the old west stuff. You know, my parents are the people that sit down and um, watch the westerns. Watch the westerns all day, and that's how I grew up. I, I grew up watching westerns, and I uh, some I've always liked to watch. Clint Eastwood and things like that. Just really fun stuff to watch. <clears throat> and once you throw some horror elements in it, you got me. And that's what it was. It, it got me. I was like, man, I got I got to get the rest of these. The Last Zombie. This is older. This is probably like 10, 12 years old. Um, I think it's from Antarctic Press. <clears throat> and I think the I think the writer is Warren Ellis. 
he it's like three or four different iterations of this and it goes about the the world has ended zombies came and they've gone no more zombies exist so they're trying to piece the world together again they're trying to get to a safe place but they got to go through these crazy places these quasi cannibal people uh Rogue biker gang nation, all kinds of stuff. You know, a fractured America. And it's interesting to see it. Very interesting to see it. Um, I discovered it not in the dollar bin. Uh, one of my, I bought it in a lot sale. So I was just like, hmm, let me get it. So you know how that goes. You're a completist. You go down the rabbit hole, so you buy all the rest of them. And that's what I did. And it was really fun to uh, read uh, the art is a little different than what I'm used to, but you know I've bought things from Antarctic Press before, but it is a really decent read. And if you like zombies and horror and things like that and the deconstruction of the human psyche and being, um, that's a good book to read because it's a, it takes a lot different twist from The Walking Dead. You know, some elements are very similar, most of them are not, but it's fun book to read. So, you know, that gets me to the end. So what are you guys what are you guys reading? You know, give me a shout out. Um tell me what you're reading. Or, you know, drop us a drop drop us a note at Sean D. Graham at Yahoo dot com. S H A W N D G R A H A M at Yahoo dot com. Or just shoot or uh you know, leave a leave leave a note for us. We'd really like to hear what you have to say. And if you leave leave a comment or review, put you in the running, you can get a graded uh, Werewolf by Night comic book um, at the beginning of next month. Okay? Till next time, see you down the road.